The 15 inch air starts from $1,300, but the moment you start upgrading it with, let's say, 16 gigs of RAM and 512 gigs of storage, you know, the go to upgrades for anyone who wants to use it for four years or so, you get to $1,700, which is the same price as a refurbished M2 Pro 14 inch MacBook Pro, or um, you can get an M1 Pro 14 inch refurbished for $1,539. So, how much better is the 14 inch MacBook Pro? And in what areas does it excel over the 15 inch MacBook Air? We'll be covering everything from the design all the way down to the performance and battery life. So starting off with the design, let's take a look at the footprint. As you can probably tell, the MacBook Air is quite a bit wider by 2.78 centimeters and 1.64 centimeters taller. So the difference in terms of the overall size is quite noticeable. So what about the weight? Well, the MacBook Air weighs 1.51 kilograms compared to 1.6 uh, on the 14-inch MacBook Pro. And I gotta say, the 14-inch MacBook Pro is definitely heavier, and because it's also smaller, that weight is more compact. So yeah, definitely feels way heavier than you know the fairly small difference between the two. Now, when it comes to the thickness, there's also a considerable difference here, as you can probably tell, with the MacBook Pro 14-inch being quite a bit thicker at 1.55 centimeters compared to 1.15 on the MacBook Air. Another visual difference is when it comes to the size of the trackpad. As you can probably tell, the 15-inch Air has a much larger trackpad than the 14-inch MacBook Pro, although whilst I was using the 14-inch MacBook Pro, I never really had an issue with its smaller trackpad. And the last design difference is when it comes to the colors. The Air comes in both gold and midnight, colors which are missing from the MacBook Pros, whilst both come in silver and space gray. So now let's talk about connectivity. When it comes to the ports, uh, they both come with MagSafe as well as two Thunderbolt ports on the left hand side. But the MacBook Pro does feature a few more ports, such as one extra Thunderbolt on the right hand side, HDMI as well as an SD card slot. All very useful to have. I mean, really, the best part about these is that you can charge and connect your MacBook Pro from either side, whereas with the MacBook Air you can only do it from the left hand side. Speaking of charging, they both feature fast charging up to 50% in just 30 minutes, but with the Air you have to manually select that 70 watt fast charger. It won't cost you anything extra, and interesting enough, uh, this 70 watt charger is actually smaller than the 67 watt that the MacBook Pro comes with, as it is now a GAN charger. I should also mention uh, the whole external display situation. So with a 15 inch Air, you can only connect one external display, whereas with a base 14 inch MacBook Pro, you can connect up to two displays, and even up to four if you go with the M2 Max chip. Right, now let's talk about the displays, as this is probably the biggest difference aside from performance between the two MacBooks. So the 15 inch Air has a 15.3 inch panel as opposed to the 14.2 on the MacBook Pro. Now the bezels are actually thinner on the 14 inch MacBook Pro than compared to the 15 inch Air. And interesting enough, the 14 inch MacBook Pro actually has a higher resolution than the 15 inch Air. So we have a 2880 by 1864 on the MacBook Air compared to a 3024 by 1964 on the Pro. Now let's talk about resolution scaling. So this is a default resolution scaling on both. So it is actually higher on the 15 inch Air. Now if I go and select the uh, more space, so the higher end scaling, this will actually be lower on the 14 inch MacBook Pro, which is really interesting. In the previous videos, I thought this would not be the case and the 14 inch would be able to scale higher because of its higher resolution, but that is no longer the case. And if you open up a website, you can see that we can actually see more text on the 15 inch MacBook Air, despite its lower resolution. Very interesting. Another big display difference is the refresh rate. The MacBook Pro has a 120Hz ProMotion display, meaning that it can also adjust that refresh rate based on what you are doing, whereas the MacBook Air is stuck at 60Hz. 120Hz on a MacBook Pro is actually very useful when gaming, and I'll get to that later. Another big display difference is that we have a mini LED display on the 14-inch MacBook Pro as opposed to a standard LCD, meaning that we have multiple dimming zones on the MacBook Pro, which can give you this OLED-like level of black levels. And because of that mini LED technology, we also get a much higher brightness on the 14-inch, up to 1600 nits peak, as opposed to just 500 on the MacBook Air. And if you use an app like Vivid, you can always take advantage of that higher brightness outdoors or anywhere you are, uh, as normally you have to be watching HDR content to uh, be using that brightness. So if you plan on using this outdoors, then the MacBook Pro is going to be a much, much better experience. So now let's test out the speakers. Both machines feature a six speaker system. However, on the 14 inch MacBook Pro, uh, we have actual speaker grills facing you, whereas on the MacBook Air, we have no speaker grills. Instead, the speakers are underneath the keyboard and uh, the sound escapes through the vents here. Apple also rates the 14 speakers as high fidelity. Yeah. 
So yeah, as you could probably hear, uh, the 14 inch Vago Pro was way better than the 15 inch Air. The sound was much clearer, the bass was punchier. So yeah, in terms of the speakers, the 14 inch is definitely miles better than the 15 inch. And now it is time to test the actual performance. So we have the M2 chip versus the M2 Pro on the 14 inch MacBook Pro. Essentially on the 15 inch Air you get an 8 core CPU, a 10 core GPU, 8 gigs of RAM and 256 gigabytes of storage on the baseline model. Whereas with the baseline 14 inch MacBook Pro you get a 10 core CPU, a 16 core GPU, 16 gigs of RAM and 512 gigabytes of storage. Not only that, but the 14 inch also has active cooling, you have dual fans as opposed to literally no fans and passive cooling with the 15 inch MacBook Air. Starting off with the AJ the speed test, the Air Air got pretty much half the speeds of the MacBook Pro. But would these have any impact on actual transfer speeds? So we just connected Arcs and all SSD and we're gonna transfer 17.91 gigabytes of files from this drive. The Air did this in 27 seconds compared to 20 seconds on the 14 inch MacBook Pro. So the MacBook Pro was 35% faster here. So what if we push these chips to the max? Well, we ran Cinebench multiple times and the 15 inch Air scored 7,761 compared to 11,648 on the 14 inch MacBook Pro. Therefore, the 14 inch was 50% faster. Not only that, but the 15 inch Air started throttling and losing performance after multiple runs with its performance dropping to 7062 on the third run, which is 65% slower than the MacBook Pro's sustained performance. Now, the temperatures were also quite interesting here. Both of them got to about the same temperature of 101 to 102 degrees Celsius, which is very hot. The 15-inch Air then started throttling down to 87, while the 14-inch MacBook Pro remained constant at 102. So it seems like Apple isn't afraid of higher temps as long as the fans are able to keep them from getting any higher. So what about some real world testing? Well, in Lightroom we imported 228 images of various resolutions and file types from different RAWs and TIFFs up to 80 megapixels in size. The Air took 38 seconds to import, while the 14-inch Pro only took 8 seconds. That is almost five times faster on the 14 inch MacBook Pro. We then applied some filters and effects to one image and then pasted those onto the remaining 227 images. And this took one minute and 15 seconds on the Air compared to one minute and five seconds on the MacBook Pro. So almost the same here. We then exported all of those 228 images in full resolution and this took 19 minutes and 11 seconds on the Air compared to just six minutes and three seconds on the MacBook Pro. So that was 3.2 times faster on the MacBook Pro. Massive difference here. We then re-exported the images, but this time we compressed them to the smallest possible size. The 15 inch Air took 9 minutes and 25 seconds, while the 14 inch Pro took 3 minutes and 23 seconds. So the MacBook Pro was 2.78 times faster. So if you work in Lightroom on a daily basis, the 14 inch MacBook Pro base will be two to five times faster than the base 15 inch MacBook Air. Onto a Blender, we rendered the classroom scene using the Cycle CPU renderer, which took 30 minutes and 40 seconds on the 15 inch Air compared to just seven minutes and 21 seconds on the MacBook Pro. So the MacBook Pro was 1.85 times faster here. And when we render the same scene, but this time using the GPU, the Air took 5 minutes and 14 seconds, while the MacBook Pro took 2 minutes and 11 seconds, being 2.4 times faster. So yeah, if you work with Blender, it's pretty much a no-brainer that you get a 14-inch MacBook Pro. Okay, moving on to some video editing. Here we have a 4K 15-minute Final Cut project. This is actually one of our previous camera comparisons, and it is a very demanding project with loads of titles and effects. Exporting this project in HF64 took the MacBook Air 43 minutes, while the MacBook Pro only took 13 minutes and 10 seconds. That is 3.2 times faster on the 14 inch MacBook Pro. This is a massive difference. So if you work in Final Cut, then the 14 inch MacBook Pro will save you so much time. We then wanted to test the ProRes media engines on both machines. So we converted the Final Cut 4K HS64 file into ProRes using compressor. This took one minute and six seconds on the MacBook Air compared to 51 seconds on the MacBook Pro. So the MacBook Pro was 1.3 times faster here. Not a massive difference as they both took only about one minute to render this. We then repeated the same test, but this time with a 6K file. And this took two minutes and 38 seconds on the Air compared to just one minute and 33 seconds on the MacBook Pro. So the MacBook Pro was 1.7 times faster here. Not only that, but the Air originally took two minutes and 54 seconds. And we ran this test multiple times with the quickest one being two minutes and 38. So what if you're a music producer who works in Logic Pro? How many more tracks can the MacBook Pro handle? 
well, the 15-inch Air was able to handle 70 tracks at the same time, which is actually a lot. However, the 14-inch MacBook Pro was able to handle 122 tracks. That was 1.74 times more. Therefore, if you work with a large number of tracks, the 14-inch is a much better option. So what about gaming? We first tested Shadow of the Tomb Raider, which although runs through Rosetta, it is one of the best performing Rosetta games, as it does take full use of Apple's Metal API. And running the graphics benchmark in 4K with the highest possible settings got us an average of 14 frames per second on the MacBook Air, compared to 33 on the MacBook Pro. 33 frames per second actually makes it somewhat playable. Not only that, but the Air would throttle even more the longer you kept playing for, whereas the MacBook Pro would stay consistent thanks to the active cooling. So what if we test a native Apple Silicon game? Well, here we have World of Warcraft, which at a resolution of 2560 by 1600 and maxed out settings, got an average of 36.5 frames per second on the Air, which was actually very impressive. However, the MacBook Pro 14 inch got 71.5 pretty much double. I still wouldn't recommend gaming on a Mac, but if you have a choice between these two, the MacBook Pro would not only get you double the frame rate, but that performance would also be sustained. Plus, you'll also get to enjoy those extra frames thanks to that 120Hz ProMotion display. Now, I do want to mention the battery life here. So, they both claim 18 hours for watching movies via the Apple TV app, but if you look closely, Apple claims 12 hours of web browsing on the 14-inch MacBook Pro compared to 15 on the Air. So judging by Apple's numbers, you'll get three extra hours from the 15-inch Air. However, from my experience using my 14-inch M1 Max MacBook Pro, uh, the Air does last many, many hours longer, as the extra GPU and CPU cores inside a 14-inch uh, will require more power. However, this also goes both ways, as when you're running a specific task, like rendering or exporting a project, the MacBook Pro is going to consume less battery due to it being able to render that project much faster. For example, during our Blender CPU render, the 14-inch lost only 4% battery, while the 15-inch lost 8% double. And keep in mind that the Air did actually take almost double the time to render this. While rendering the Final Cut Pro project, the 14-inch lost 19% compared to 25% on the MacBook Air. And while rendering the 6K compressor project, the MacBook Pro lost uh, nothing, <laughs> while the Air only lost 1%. So essentially what I'm saying is that if your task revolves around web browsing, then the Air would last you much longer than the MacBook Pro. But if your task involves complex renders, then the MacBook Pro would last longer. So in conclusion, the 14-inch MacBook Pro seems much better in every single way. It's got more ports, more powerful speakers, a much better display with a higher refresh rate than close to OLED black levels. It's got between 2-5 to five times better performance than the Air and costs the same as the 15-inch Air with 16 gigs of RAM and 512 gigs of storage. Plus, it's also got Wi-Fi 6C as opposed to Wi-Fi 6 on the 15-inch Air and a lot more configuration options with the M2 Max chip uh, with 12 cores for the CPU and 38 cores for the GPU, as well as up to 96 gigs of RAM compared to 24 on the Air and up to eight terabytes of storage compared to uh, two terabytes max on the Air. So concerning all of this, why should you even consider the 15-inch Air? Well, if portability is your main concern, then the 15-inch Air is a better option. Yes, the footprint is a bit larger, but it is also much thinner, much lighter, and just feels nicer to use. And you also get to see more on your display compared to the 14-inch MacBook Pro. Also, once Apple has any units in their refurbished store, you should be able to grab one for just about $1,100 or so. Uh, so much less than the $1,700 or the $1,500 price point of a refurbished M2 Pro or M1 Pro 14-inch. However, for most people, I would still recommend the 14-inch MacBook Pro, as even if you don't need that extra performance today, it's extremely good to have for future proofing. But let me know which one would you guys pick, and definitely check out the comparison between the 15-inch Air and the 13-inch M2 Air, as the differences are more than just the display size. I'm Daniel, it means enough tech, and I'll see you guys in the next one. So enough tech, signing out. Cheers.